Good morning. Today is Tuesday, July 12th. I'm Danielle Wiggins with your 3 News Now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC YouTube page. We start with Holly for a check of today's forecast because Holly, we started out muggy. Yeah, muggy, but not as warm. So we'll end up in that low 80 range as we take an hour by hour view here on your National Design Mart forecast. This is the view this afternoon. We're seeing a lot of sunshine. Can't rule out a stray shower, but most of you should be dry through today and this evening for that matter. Then we get into your Wednesday and once again, we'll see some scattered shower or storm chances tomorrow, mainly into the afternoon, otherwise partly sunny. And it'll be another more or less seasonal outlook as we get into the middle of the week, upper 70s, low 80s. Thursday and Friday look just phenomenal. I mean, both days just picture perfect for this time of the year. And then we heat things back up for the weekend. Just an isolated shower or storm chance for Sunday. So the weekend is really going to be a good one, Danielle, to get outside, mm -hmm. take advantage of the pool, the beach, and uh, all the things that we love this time of the year. Then Monday, we'll have some scattered showers and storms, better chances as we head into early next week. All righty. Thank you so much, Holly. And this morning, Akron city officials are pleading with the community for peace in the city. The curfew was once again in place overnight in downtown Akron until 5 o'clock this morning. This comes after a rise in protests and more gun violence after the fatal shooting of Jalen Walker by Akron police. Akron Mayor Dan Horgan and Akron Police Chief Steve Milet virtually addressed daily protests and tension among residents that continue to linger. So long as the, the participants are nonviolent, we are going to give them space. I think the only way this community can heal uh, is together, um, is by moving forward, by having some of those really necessary hard conversations uh, that necessitate the hard change. Meanwhile, Jalen Walker's family attorney is also calling for peace and for new policies in the city, starting with police dash cameras. There is no reason not any reason to take a slow approach to changing policies. That can happen this week, today. It could have happened yesterday. They could have gone to the office on Friday. The community and its membership are in pain and need to express itself in a nonviolent way. Organizations including the Freedom Bloc and the Akron NAACP have issued demands from city and state officials asking for an expedited collaboration. Mayor Horgan says the city is working with the Department of Justice to facilitate that meeting. And Jalen Walker's family announced his funeral will be held tomorrow at the Akron Civic Theater on South Main Street. A viewing will take place from 10 in the morning until 1230, with the funeral taking place at 1. And today, his family will host a unity gathering at the Remedy Church on Britton Road. Doors open at 630. And turning to politics, yesterday at the White House, surrounded by families affected by gun violence, President Biden talked about new measures aimed at stopping the attacks and promised to continue the fight. It was an event that outlined the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. The president signed the act into law last month. My family, our families and our community are devastated. I mean, the reality yeah. is I'm, I'm here today for this, and Wednesday I'll be at the cemetery for what should have been my daughter's 19th birthday. It's proof that despite the naysayers, we can make meaningful progress on dealing with gun violence. So here's what the new law does. It expands background checks for those between the ages of 18 and 21, blocks convicted domestic abusers from owning a gun, and creates new penalties for illegal gun purchases, and also provides more funds for mental health care and school safety. Now to local stories we're following. Here are three things to know. We start in Mayfield Heights, where the majority of residents are allowed back in an apartment complex after being forced to evacuate over the weekend. There are 80 units in the Mayfield Gardens apartments, and people are allowed to move back into all but 12 units. The building was condemned Friday, and tenants were told to leave over structural concerns. Engineers say new inspections found that the center of the building is safe. The complex is working with those still not allowed back to find other places to live. 
And we've learned some new details in Deshaun Watson's disciplinary hearings. The briefs that have to be handed in from both sides were expected to be turned in yesterday, but today is the ultimate deadline. The briefs are essentially a final argument to Sue L. Robinson about what they believe Watson's punishment should be. But as far as when a decision will be handed down, some reports are saying it still could take a couple of weeks. Slimin's Tavern has announced that it is closing its restaurant in Orange, effective immediately. In a Facebook post, Slimin says the building was sold. The restaurant added that plans for relocation will be coming. The only Slimin's Tavern is now in Independence after last year's closure of the Minor location. And of course, you can still go to the Deli location in St. Clair, on St. Clair rather, in Cleveland. And Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb, along with members of the Ohio Mayor's Alliance and state lawmakers, toured the West Side Market yesterday. They said their goal is to keep the landmark relevant and vibrant, and the mayor called for more state funding. Uh, we were able to get a, a half a million dollar reauthorization to support the second floor, the renovation of the West Side Market. So I'm always pitching uh, the West Side Market to members of the state uh, legislature. Uh, we were able to get uh, a half a million dollar reauthorization to support the second floor, the renovation of the West Side Market. Uh, moving forward, we have uh, plans to change the operating model of the market to get more capital to turn around long term. And so having members of the state legislature here today to see this amazing asset will go a long way to keep making the case for why we need more investments from the state. In March, Cleveland City Council approved legislation that would cap rental rate increases, expand lease options, and allow sales of alcohol at the West Side Market. And after a tough couple of years for the tourism industry because of the pandemic, Destination Cleveland is announcing a new approach to promoting the city. President and CEO David Gilbert announced the organization's new vision yesterday with a strategic plan covering the next three years. He is hoping to attract more visitors, strengthen outside perceptions of the city, and show off some of the unique experience that the region has to offer. It's a lot of work, a lot of partnership, but if we do it right, it's going to help draw more people to Cleveland to live here, to work here, to invest here, and visitors are the number one source for that. And it's not a revolution, more of an evolution, but it really, it really is different, and we're excited about it. Changes are also coming to the visitor brand, a campaign called The Land for Life. Well, it includes new ads, a storytelling series, and a podcast. With the new plans in place, Destination Cleveland says that they are on track to seeing visitation return to pre-pandemic levels by 2024. And speaking of traveling to Cleveland, the city is hosting two major conferences this week. Starting today, there will be meetings of the National Independent Venue Association. The group is focused on helping independent live entertainment businesses survive during times of crisis like the pandemic. They will meet at places around the downtown area like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And the National Homeland Security Conference begins today at the Huntington Convention Center downtown. The conference brings together experts in homeland security, law enforcement, fire and emergency management, and our own Betsy Kling is the MC for the event, which runs through Thursday. Okay, now you have to check this out. I'm sure it's taking over your social media timelines. NASA released the first image from its new space telescope. It's the deepest view of the universe ever captured, and it was taken by the world's largest and most powerful telescope called the James Webb. The image captures the faint light of a number of uncounted suns in thousands of never before seen galaxies millions of light years away. And today, the space agency will release four more images from the telescope. And of course, we will have that on WKYC.com. Well, thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Danielle Wiggins, and I'll see you tomorrow morning on go starting at 4.30 a.m. Have a great day, everybody.